In the last lecture, we looked at the Internet, which is the infrastructure and controls the communication processes as the data travels from one location to another location. The World Wide Web is really a collection of documents, images, and other information stored on the Internet. And in this lecture, we'll look at what goes on behind the scenes and how the World Wide Web functions as a whole. In order to access information on the World Wide Web, we need to have web servers and a web browser. A web server is software that listens for web page requests, usually from, from a browser, and sends that information back. There are two common ones out there, Apache and Microsoft IIS. A web browser fetches information that is given to it from the web server and displays that information. Some of the popular ones are Microsoft's Internet Explorer, Apple's Safari, Mozilla's Firefox, Google's Chrome, and Opera. If you recall from the Internet, each device or computer is given a unique IP address. Instead of having to memorize the long numbers to go over to a web page, the domain name system, or DNS, was created. It acts as a map. So when we type in the web browser www.aucakg, it goes over to the DNS survey, looks up that information, and says this is the address you need to go to. The address system that we know that we use is called a URL, or Uniform Resource Locator. This is what we type into the browser to go to a particular address, and it's composed of the protocol, the host, and the path. For this particular address, or URL, we know that it is for the web uh, the browser because it's HTTP, and it's going to go over to the host, www.w3schools.com. And then it's going to go over to the particular path on that the survey. When the URL is entered into the web, the browser, the first thing that happens is there's a request over to the DNS survey to what address is W3Schools. Then it connects on port 80 because that's what HTTP uses. Then on the particular survey of W3Schools, it says get this document. And then the web survey returns it and then it is displayed. There are other type of URLs too, ones that allow that allow the user to jump to a particular location, particularly on a long page. Or JavaScript will use it too to do other activity on the page. We can specify other ports other than the default of 80, especially if you want to keep something hidden or for other purposes. Instead of just going to the page, you can also give it the parameters to have the page do something special. For instance, a Google search, you can use the Q parameter and put in the search query and you can specify the language. In this case, it will return back only the version pages if they exist. The Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, is a set of commands that is understood by the web server and by the uh, web browser. Some of the common ones are GET, which the web browser requests something from the server, or POST, the web browser is sending something to the web server, usually text information from a form, or a put, which is a file to upload. When the web browser connects to the web server using HTTP, a code is usually returned. If everything is OK, the web server returns back code 200. If something goes wrong, the corresponding code is returned. For instance, if the wrong URL is entered and the file is not found, a code 404 might be returned. Or if something goes wrong in the server itself, a code 500 can be returned. These codes help the programmer do something special with the page. If a particular code is returned, they might display a different error message or redirect the user to a different page. The Internet Media, or MIME types, determine what to do with the file when it is requested from the server. 
For instance, an HTML file, you want that to render the HTML in the format we know. Or in a TXT file, we want this perhaps to be displayed in the web browser so the user can read the information. Or a .exe, you don't want to execute it immediately, rather you'd rather have this do a download to the computer. Then the user can save it or and execute it later on. The web languages or technologies that we are interested in this class and will be using are HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. This is used for writing web pages, CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets. This is to provide stylistic information for the web page. This is changing the font or making the background color to be a gray or something other than the default. PHP Hypertext Processor, or PHP, this is a server-side language for dynamically creating pages on the web server. JavaScript is a client-side language, meaning it runs directly in the web browser itself. It allows the user to interact with various elements on the web page. AJAX, or Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, is for accessing data for web applications. XML, or Extensible Markup Language, is a text-based uh, format for organizing and storing data. Structure Query Language, or SQL, is for interacting with a database. These web languages or technologies allow us to create a web application. A web application usually allows the user to interact with the web server in a seamless basis. This is without having to make a bunch of page refreshes and it acts like a regular application on a desktop rather than a bunch of web pages that are simply linked together. Facebook, Twitter, news web pages, Gmail, YouTube are examples of web applications.